So before we get to arc measures and arc lengths of circles, first I just want to add in some formal definitions, some notation that we might be using in this lesson. So first, our formal definition for a circle is just all of the points that are equidistant from a given point. So equidistant, which makes sense. If you've got a point here in the middle, then we would be talking about for a circle all of the points that are the exact same distance or that radius from the point in the middle. The way that we name a circle, so if we've got our circle right here, we name it by its center, so we would call it circle M. And our symbol for that, if we didn't want to use the whole word, we would just draw a circle. It does have a little dot in it, and we would say circle M. So that would be a different way that we could say circle M with notation. Some definitions that we really already know. A segment that contains the center of the circle and then has both endpoints on the circle would be a diameter. A segment that has one endpoint on the center and then the other endpoint on the circle is a radius. So still going to be using some things that we already knew. And this one might be new. Our central angle is an angle whose vertex is on the center of the circle. Okay, so if we have an angle that looks like this where the vertex is the center of the circle, that would be a central angle. In concentric circles, this one isn't used as much, but it's kind of interesting. Um, there are circles that are not congruent. I'm going to put our symbol for congruent there. But they share a center. So basically it ends up looking like a target if you have several concentric circles. They share that center but they're not congruent to each other so they're going to be, one is going to be slightly bigger than the other. So kind of a a ripple in a pond effect going on. So to give an example of each of those, looking at our diagram over here, the center of this circle is point B. A diameter that we've been given, the only one that's drawn in here is a segment AC. And if I'm naming the diameter, I do want to go ahead and make it a segment, so use proper notation. For a radius, we've got three that are drawn in here. BA is a radius. And remember, I can call it AB as well. BD is a radius, and so is BC. So as long as it has one endpoint is on the circle and then one point is the center, then you're talking about a radius. For a central angle, same thing. We've got several that we can name here. As long as its vertex is the center of the circle, it is a central angle. So angle ABD would be a central angle. I'm not going to name all of, or list all of these, but we've got angle ABC would be a straight angle, but still a central angle. Angle DBC is another angle we've got there. I think that's about it. And then the circle itself, since it has a center of B, we would call it circle B. So the part that we're going to focus on today are arcs of a circle. And an arc is really just a piece of a circle. And I'm not talking about the interior of the circle here. Think more, this is really tiny, but think more of it as the crust of pizza or of several pieces of pizza. So we're just talking about that outer piece and that arc is a piece of that. You could also say that it's like a piece of the circumference. And we can classify an arc three different ways. It could be a semicircle, which is exactly half of a circle. It could be a major arc, which means that it is larger than a semicircle. Or it could be a minor arc, which means it is smaller than a semicircle. And depending on whether we're talking about a semicircle, major, or minor arc, they're going to be named in a slightly different way. Our notation that we use is slightly different. So if we're talking about a minor arc, we're going to name it just by its endpoints. So for example, up here on the right, XZ, when we say just those two letters, we're talking about the minor arc that goes from X to Z. So this arc right here. 
Now, because they tell me two letters, that's how I know I'm not going to go around it this way and be talking about this big arc because they only gave me two letters. So I know, okay, it's a minor arc, so it's got to be the shortest path from X to Z. If it is a major arc or a semicircle, it's going to give its endpoints, but then it's also going to give another point on the circle that is in between those endpoints. So we've got two examples here. Z, Y, X is a major arc. So if we start at Z, we have to go through Y to get to X. So that middle letter will always be in between them. So this would be the major arc, Z, Y, X. And then Z, X, Y is a semicircle. So Z, X, Y. So as long as you follow it in the correct order, then you'll be fine on those major arcs and semicircles. So looking at this next example, we're just trying to decide if each arc is a major, minor arc, or a semicircle. So looking at our first arc AB, first we just know that since they labeled it with two letters, it has to be a minor arc. But I also want you to go through the motions of finding it in the circle so that you know, okay, we're talking about this arc right here. If we're looking at the arc ADC, remember I want to follow those letters in order, so A, then D, then C. So that would be a semicircle. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can name the rest of these. Uh, decide if it is a major, minor arc, or a semicircle. So number three, arc CD is a minor arc. Arc DEA, make sure you're going the right direction this way. DEA is a major arc. CEA is a semicircle, CE is a minor arc, so it doesn't actually have to be a segment going to E for there to be a point there. Arc AEC would be a semicircle, this is actually the same semicircle as CEA, kind of like when we say angle CEA or angle AEC, these are the exact same semicircle, just different notation, and then arc DE we would want to go the shorter route and not the longer route because it is a minor arc with just those two letters. So now that we know how to name an arc, uh, we're going to jump into two different quantities that we will find with arcs. The first of those is the arc measure. And our arc measure is always equal to that arc's corresponding central angle. So if we're talking about arc ED, and we're still going to use that little M out front to say the measure of arc ED, and notice we call it the measure, we've got measure. Um, if we're talking about arc ED over here, it's going to correspond to its central angle for ED. So since this is my arc ED, I would be looking at this central angle. I would add that 30 and 40 to say that the measure of arc ED is 70 degrees. Same thing for arc EDA. So making sure that we're following those letters in order. Here's arc EDA. And again, I would just have to add all of those measures together for the central angles, 30, 40, and 140 to get 210. We also know from this that a semicircle, since it is exactly half of a circle, it is always going to have a measure of 180 degrees. Because its corresponding central angle is always going to be a straight angle. So if that straight angle is 180 degrees, the measure of the arc is 180 degrees. Something else that we might need to know before moving on is that the sum of all central angles is 360 degrees in a circle. So all of these angles have to add up to 360 degrees. So for our first example, for the measure of AE, I actually have a few ways that I can do this, but one of the ways is that since I have all of the other central angles, I can take 360 and then subtract this big angle. And we actually already added this together. It was 210 for all of those. So I can take 360 and subtract 210. To get that, the measure of arc AE is 150. Another way that I could go about finding this arc is by looking at a semicircle here. And I know that that adds up to 180. So I could take 180 minus 30, and that would tell me that the central angle in the arc is 150 as well. For example two, we've got the measure of arc CDA. So looking at arc CDA, we can add those together, but we also should see that it is a semicircle. So now it adds up to 180. Go ahead and pause the video for a second and try number three and four on your own. 
So for the measure of arc DAE, and make sure that you're following the major arc and not the minor since it has three letters, it's the big arc here. So probably the easiest way is taking 140 plus 150, but you also could take 360 and subtract out 70. That would work as well. For arc DAC, again, looking at a major arc here, um, and you can take 360 and subtract 40, or you could add 140, 150, and 30.